If you're looking for videos on dolphins swimming in the ocean, well, you're in the wrong place. Now, hey, if you're looking for the latest Miami Dolphins news and rumors, you're in the right place. So go down there, lay underneath the video, and click that big red button that says subscribe. That way, you don't miss any of, any of our videos here at Chat Sports. And also, everyone out there, I do want to wish you a happy Thanksgiving. Miami Dolphin fans, Mitchell Rents here from Chat Sports, and we got a lot of stuff to talk about because this morning, Brian Flores broke down the benching of Tua. He talked about running back Miles Gaskin. Also, the offensive line, we got to talk about five dudes. And at the very end, we are going to break down Devon Gotcha to see whether or not he is going to end up playing. But before we get into all of that, let's break down this week's game because I just wish the Dolphins could have taken care of business up against the Denver Broncos. But... Here we are, it's week 12. The Bills, they didn't have a game last week, and so be it. So now you got the Bills at 7-3, the Dolphins at 6-4, and four, but luckily, you play this team right here, the New York Jets, who's sitting there at 0-10. So the question, as soon as I see this, is like, honestly, I know we're not talking about the Jets normally here on this channel, but are they ever going to win a game this year? Give me a Y for yes. Or type N for no. For those of you that maybe don't know me very well, my dad is a huge Jets fan. So I anticipate on sharing this video with him. So I'm relying on everyone in the comments section to type N for no. Because I, I don't know when they're going to win. And if they do win a game, lucky for them. Because I can't predict the future. But you know what? I am pretty confident that the Miami Dolphins are going to win this game. And I think everyone out there is going to pick Miami. Because right now, when I look at the latest odds from BetUS, Miami, seven-point favorites over New York. And the over-under in this game, 44-and-a-half points. So everyone out there, go bet on Miami to cover the spread. Go bet on Miami to win this game outright. You just got to go to chatsports.com slash bet. Let me say that again. You see that link below? Yeah. I'm talking to you, chatsports.com slash bet. Use this promo code right here, Dolphins125. It's going to get you 125% deposit bonus. What does that mean? If you deposit $100 at BetUS, you get $125 for free to bet with. But oh wait, there's more. How about this? For all new BetUS users, we're also going to hook you up with a Tua jersey. You're welcome. If all you heard was, wait a minute, I can get a Tua jersey, email me. I can get you all the details, walk you through step by step. Just email us, dolphins at chatsports.com. But remember, it's for new bet US users only. All right, y'all, predict the score. Miami Dolphins, New York Jets. As a reminder, again, the over-under, 44 and a half points. Dolphins, seven-point favorites. I'm thinking here... I think the Jets maybe score this week. I mean, think about it. The last time they played Miami, it was 24-0. I'm going to go 27-10 win for Miami. Let's break down the latest now. So for those of you that maybe live underneath a rock or, I don't know, maybe find yourself looking for actual Dolphins videos, Tua was benched this past week going up against Denver, and Brian Flores talked about it this morning. He said that Tua has responded well, that he thinks that the benching might have actually been a good thing for him. We'll see. He is obviously going to start against the Jets, but there was a lot of controversy around the benching because obviously you already benched Fitz for the quarterback that you drafted fifth overall, and here are his numbers. The only thing that I can come up with is he averaged 4.2 yards per attempt. He was definitely afraid to stretch the ball down the field, but for me, he is still yet to turn over the football. And I think the reason why you went to, he's yet to throw an interception, my mistake. The reason why you went to Tua over Ryan Fitzpatrick is because Fitz put your defense in tough situations. And as great as what the Miami defense has played, Tua really hasn't done that this year. Now, sure, he's not really willing to sling it around like Fitzpatrick was, but at the end of the day, I think you still got to be pretty happy with the success of Tua, with the success of this offense, because you are still winning football games. And I know we all sit here all the time and say, oh, a quarterback shouldn't be judged on wins and losses. But, but it's the truth. A quarterback is always going to be judged on wins and losses. So you just bench the guy who really hasn't even lost yet. I don't know. How do you feel about it? Do you agree with the move, or do you disagree with the benching of Tua? I think Brian Flores has done a very, very good job, and in fact, should definitely be up there for Coach of the Year. So it's kind of hard to disagree with him, but I'm going to disagree with him. I, I personally don't think that Tua should have been benched, but let me know down there. Type A for agree, or type D for disagree. 
My fingers crossed on this one. I really hope Miles Gaskin is able to rock and roll against the Jets. Now, he is eligible to be activated off the IR with a knee injury. That doesn't mean that he is going to play. So he hasn't played since week eight, basically the entire month of November. The last time we saw him was November 2nd. Flores says that he's doing well, that he thinks he might be able to go. But at this point, all I can tell you is this. He's questionable. I know. Sorry. We'll get a, probably an update a little bit later on in the week. But for the seventh rounder, he has been fantastic. I mean, for uh, filling in for Matt Breida, that one didn't work out. Jordan Howard, that one definitely didn't work out, but has been one of the main focal points, not just in the running game, you can see on screen 387 rushing yards, but also catching the football, 30 receptions, 198 yards. Now, Ahmad, I will say this, has done a nice job filling in for Gaskin, but as soon as he's ready to come back, they should play him. Now, I, uh, I said earlier on, is he going to play against the Jets? For me, if I'm running the offense, and I know, believe me, I, I'm not doing it, I personally don't know if he should go. But before I give you my answer, how about this? Type P for play or type R for rest. If you're running the offense, if you're Brian Flores and Miles Gaskin comes trotting up to you right before the game and says, you know what, coach, I'm ready to go. Are you going to put him in? Type P for play or I want you to go down there in the comment section and type R for rest. For me, I am going to rest him. And the reason why is because it's the New York Jets. You should be able to beat the New York Jets without your top running back. So rest him. Make sure he's ready to be fully healthy for the last stretch of the season because if you can't beat the Jets without Gaskin, well, maybe you just tank it and get a better draft pick. But seriously, rest him. Let him come back another week. The offensive line is where we're going now. We're going to give you updates on two players. So Jesse Davis, he was added to the COVID-19 reserve list today. And another injury update here is on Solomon Kinley. So Kinley questionable with a foot injury. If you remember last week, he was really, really battling that foot injury. Missed a few practices. Was able to tough it out. Tried to play through the pain. Unfortunately, had to be taken out of the Week 11 game. So here now is the offensive line. And uh, coming into the season, this was the biggest weakness for this team. There is no doubt about it. So you got Jesse Davis, left tackle. Kinley at right guard. If both of those dudes are unable to play, look for Michael Dieter, Adam Pankey, maybe Julian Davenport. They could be the potential guys that step up and really try to protect Tua. But at this current juncture, the da or the Davis, Davis and Kinley, they are not going to be able to play. So let's say both guys are out. Who do you think is the bigger loss for this offensive line? If you think it's Jesse Davis, type JD. If you think it's Solomon Kinley, I want you to go down in the comments section. I don't care if you watch this on YouTube. I don't care if you see it on Facebook. Heck, we might even make a MySpace page here. Let me know. SK for Solomon Kinley or JD for Jesse Davis. My last update here is on Devon Gotcha. And, uh, well, he is eligible to be activated with a, with a biceps injury. He hasn't played since week five against the 49ers, but if you go all the way back to week five, there was an old report that said that he is a long shot to return in 2020. So for me, I am a not, not a believer that he is going to be able to play against the Jets, and at this point, I don't know if he's going to be able to come back the entire season. This is just another example of a shorter IR due to the new rules, and the fact that he can return doesn't mean he will. Now, in the five games this season, he's got 16 tackles, a tackle for loss, two QB hits, and... I actually think uh, this Dolphins defense for the amount of injuries and the amount of players that were decided to opt out and the amount of players that were traded, they have done a great, great job. Brian Flores this morning had a few words to talk about his defensive tackle. He said he's a tough guy, or he's as tough as a guy as there is on our team, and I've been around. It's a tough injury, but he's doing everything from a rehab and treatment standpoint. I wouldn't rule anything out. He also said this, and I kind of like when coaches say this or try to give medical advice. I'm not a doctor. Thank you, Brian Flores. So I don't feel I can put a timetable on things like that, but I do know <clears throat> he's since he's been in here getting treated, he looks good, so we'll just take it one day at a time. And that's what you got to do. You just got to take it one day at a time. And another player where if he says, hey, I can play, I am a believer that you do need to be able to put him in the football game because I have confidence in Tua and this offense, but it is still predicated you need to be able to win football games with your defense because I do think you have one of the best and yet probably one of the most underrated defenses in the National Football League. Now, before I go, I do want to say this. I'm thankful for everyone that makes it all the way to the end of the videos because believe it or not, here at Chat Sports, this is our job. 
This is how we put food on the table. This is how I'm going to put food on the table for Thanksgiving. So let me know down in the comments section, what are you thankful for? Are you thankful for your family, your parents, or knows? Maybe you're even thankful for this channel.